Welcome to the Orangutan Gang's live lesson seminar for Orangutan Caring Week. It's really important this week that we educate ourselves about orangutans and the threats that they face so that we can help save them from the same fate as many of the other species that live in their habitat. So I will go ahead and share my screen and pull up the presentation I was planning to use. I guess you guys already have a sneak preview of my question slide. Again, thanks so much for coming. My name is Pangea Finn. I run the Orangutan Gang. It started in 2013 as a public education and community awareness initiative about solutions to the palm oil issue which threatens orangutans. And all of that may not sound very obvious to you, but you will be learning plenty about orangutans and palm oil and how you can help over the course of this seminar. I wanted to start with talking a little bit about orangutans because they're kind of the poster child for rainforest conservation and especially rainforest conservation in Borneo and Sumatra in this area where it's being destroyed to make room for palm oil plantations. Orangutans are great apes. They share 97% DNA with humans. Humans, orangutans, chimpanzees, gorillas, and bonobos are all great apes. Orangutans are a part of this group. They're also some of the most intelligent animals on earth. They're second only to humans in terms of learning and problem solving abilities. That means they're ahead of chimpanzees, even though chimps share more DNA with humans. This is according to a 2006 meta-analysis of several studies by Diener et al. Orangutans live on the islands of Sumatra and Borneo. In context, that is the countries of Indonesia and Malaysia in Southeast Asia. They are the largest tree living or arboreal animal in the world. They eat, sleep, and live in trees. They're also critically endangered for a number of reasons, including poaching and habitat loss. Orangutans eat leaves and bark, honey, fruit, insects. Occasionally, some orangutans will eat slow lorises, which is a type of primate related to bush babies. They build carefully engineered sleeping nests on a nightly basis. Sometimes they'll build two in a day so that they can take a nap. Sometimes they will reuse an old nest with added branches. They're mostly solitary animals with the exception of child rearing and occasionally adolescent females will travel together. Female orangutans raise their babies alone without the help of a male. Sometimes an older sister will be present to watch so she can learn how to parent. Orangutan mothers raise their babies for up to 10 years. That means that they have a relationship with their babies rivaling the closeness of human parenting relationships. They spend so much time with their mothers, probably because there is so much to learn about staying alive in the wild, which is why orangutan rehabilitation is time intensive and costly. Orangutans also use tools in the wild. They use sticks for retrieving food, like honey, fruit, and insects. They also will wave sticks around to protect themselves from bees or aggressive insects. And they will use stick rakes to retrieve out of reach branches that they might not otherwise be able to reach. They also display signs of culture. According to a 2003 paper by Van Schaik et al., this means that some populations display behaviors which are absent in other populations. A really good example of this from the paper is a behavior known as snag riding, which is present in one population and not observed in all of the other populations. This behavior consists of an orangutan seeing a dead tree and jumping onto it and pushing it over and then sitting on it as it falls to the ground. A little bit of a fun behavior. So other examples of cultural behaviors in orangutans include making little bundles of leaves, quote, dolls to sleep with, and also using napkin leaves to wipe their mouths. Orangutans are innovative. They use tools for many different purposes. Some orangutans, like Princess, learned up to 30 signs using them to ask for food and, among other things, tickling. Orangutans have also been known to master observational learning. If you've ever seen a video of an orangutan washing socks, you might think that that might be a circus trick that the orangutan has been taught to do. However, in this case, with this video of an orangutan washing socks, this is in fact a behavior that they have learned from watching a human do it. So this orangutan had seen someone at the river washing socks with soap and water and decided to just imitate them. The one thing the orangutan made up itself was eating the soap. 
The orangutan that I mentioned, Princess, who learned a number of sign language signs, has a number of antics and stories associated with her. So I thought I'd share some of those. She would steal the canoe of the people at the rehabilitation center and take it down the river so that she could eat blossoms off this one particular tree that she liked. She also was pr present in this story where a new researcher had just arrived at the station and was trying to get into his quarters and the key wasn't working. He was having trouble with the key. So Princess comes out of the forest. She takes the key out of his hand, puts it in the door, unlocks the door, goes into the house that he was assigned to, and then she slams the door in his face and locks it. And he's just standing there listening, trying to figure out what's going on inside his house. And after a few minutes, Princess comes out, she opens the door, unlocks it, and she just leaves. He goes into the house and he finds an empty bowl on the table and fruit peels all over the floor. So orangutans have also been seen to engineer their sleeping nests. Orangutans choose stronger branches for the frames of their nests and more flexible ones for the mattress. They're actually better nest builders than other great apes. This is according to a 2012 study. A 2018 study actually investigated the proficiency of young children versus orangutans in a tool making task where you had to bend a wire into a hook in order to, to get a treat basket. And what they found was that the orangutans consistently outperformed the children at the task. They were able to quickly bend the tool to get the reward. Orangutans live on two islands in Southeast Asia. Indonesia and Malaysia are the countries. Sumatra and Borneo are the islands. They live in dense rainforest areas. They spend 95% of their time in trees. The recently discovered Tapanuli orangutan species has not yet been observed on the ground at all. They tend to live in areas where there's more fruit. So the more fruit or the easier fruit is to get, the larger orangutan population will be in the area. This rainforest in Southeast Asia is incredibly diverse. Over 15% of the world's bird, reptile, and amphibian species live in Indonesia, along with a wide diversity of mammal species. However, this rainforest is under threat from logging, paper and pulp plantations, but mainly from palm oil development. So a question you probably have here is, what is palm oil? There are a couple of answers for this. So I'll start with the physical what is it and where does it come from? It's processed from orange red palm fruits like in this picture that you see here and these fruits are harvested from plantations of oil palm trees. Those plantations are grown extensively in Southeast Asia on some of the same islands where orangutans live. Palm oil is an ingredient that's used in many household products for a number of reasons which I'll elucidate shortly. I also wanted to mention that it's distinct from coconut oil. Coconut oil is derived from coconuts, which come from a different type of palm tree. Industrially, palm oil is a really positive crop. It's efficient. That means that a given area of oil palm trees will produce a lot more vegetable oil than the same area of, say, soy plants or sunflowers. Palm oil derivatives can be used for many purposes, including as cleaning agents or emulsifiers or to make certain foods creamier. Palm oil grows well in Southeast Asia since it's a tropical crop, so it's grown a lot there. Another benefit to palm oil is that it's free of unhealthy artificial trans fats. These are banned in the US, which means it's more appealing to food companies looking to sell their products in the US who therefore can't use oils that do have artificial trans fats in them. And palm oil's efficiency and all of these reasons make it cheaper than other oils. For all these reasons, it's more widely used. However, there's a quite a different story when you look at palm oil environmentally. It's awful for the environment. Rainforest is often destroyed in order to make room for plantations, meaning that many of the animals that live in that rainforest lose their habitat. Many species, including orangutans, need wide varieties of fruit, leaves, and bark to eat, and plantations simply don't supply that because they only have one type of tree. This means that all of these species are unable to migrate into the palm oil plantations and are forced into smaller and smaller areas of rainforest. Rainforests like the ones in Southeast Asia are also carbon sinks. 
Carbon dioxide is absorbed by the trees and stored in organic molecules inside the trees. And when the trees burn, that carbon is released again back into the atmosphere. This contributes to global warming. In 2015, the haze from the uncontrolled fires set by palm oil producers spread across most of Southeast Asia. This is a map of the rainforest destruction in Borneo that shows just how widespread this is. At the time this map was made, it was not this year. So this last picture that you see of 2020 is a projected, but it does look something like that today. And you can see all of this rainforest that's just slowly, slowly being eaten away until there's very little pure rainforest left. Palm oil production is also bad from an ethical standpoint. There are often human rights abuses on palm oil plantations. Many species, including orangutans, are victims of hunters and poachers on palm oil plantations. Workers work long hours, children work on plantations to help their parents, and workers don't get proper medical care. In addition, the land that palm oil producers are using to grow their plantations on is not only being taken from orangutans and from rainforest species, also certain times the lands, is take, the lands are taken from indigenous communities who lived there previously. Even though palm oil is free of trans fats, that doesn't mean it's healthy. Palm oil contains saturated fats, which are bad for your heart, even though companies use it to look healthy. Palm oil is also very common in grocery store products. Because of its low cost and supposed health benefits, many manufacturers think palm oil is a great choice for their product. This is a list I wanted to share with you of some products in your home that might have palm oil in them. In terms of specific products, Oreo, Ritz crackers, and Nutella are some important examples. I'm gonna pause for just a second so that I can see if anyone else has entered the meeting, um, the waiting room. So let's see. Unfortunately, no one appears to have arrived. I will continue. This is a list of some products in your home that might contain palm oil. In the kitchen, you might see packaged and snack foods, dairy, bread, confections, dish and hand soap, cooking oil, chocolate, and condiments might all have palm oil in them. In the bathroom, it's also very widespread in hand and bath soap, deodorant, hair care, cosmetics, and even toothpaste. Palm oil is also used for a wide variety of other uses, including pet food, biodiesel, candles, laundry detergent, and cleaning products. All of these are products that you might see palm oil in. And here are some statistics related to palm oil that I wanted to sh share with you. I'm apparently not talking right today. 85% of the world's palm oil supply is sourced from Indonesia and Malaysia. And remember, those are the two countries where orangutans live. 300 football fields of rainforest in Indonesia are destroyed every hour. Some of this is to make room for palm oil plantations. Some of this is for logging. Some of this is for paper and pulp, but the grand tally is 300 football fields per hour. 18 grams of palm oil are directly and indirectly consumed and used in one day by one person. I know that seems a little complicated. The idea is that by not finding out how your palm oil is sourced and trying to avoid palm oil possibly, you are basically contributing 18 grams of palm oil every day to the problem. And if you tally that up over a year, that assuming that those 300 football fields are all palm oil related, then that comes out to being an area the size of a twin size bed. 2,500 orangutans have been killed per year for the past four decades. This is from poaching orangutans that venture onto plantations, also for the baby orangutan pet trade, and also sometimes for hunting. And here is a very unfortunate statistic that gives us a sense of just how common palm oil is, especially in processed and packaged foods. Lots of people are buying more packaged foods now with COVID-19 and people are thinking less about environmental concerns. So I thought I'd share this just to show you exactly how widespread this is. 50% of packaged grocery store products contain palm oil. So this is of course all very unfortunate but this talk is not just about 
what the problem is with palm oil. And the most important thing I wanted to share with you tonight is about solutions, what you can do about this. There are some programs that will evaluate companies based on their palm oil responsibility. They're called certification programs. They usually certify companies as sustainable if the palm oil they use meets certain standards. So one example of this is Green Palm, which logo you see here. That's a certificate to become certified by some deadline. It means that Green Palm provides companies with certificates, and then the companies use the money from those certificates to transition to sustainable or RSPO certified palm oil. So if you see a Green Palm label, it means that the company has promised to improve their palm oil policy. The RSPO label, which you might see on a number of products, it's the most common out of these. This means that the company's palm oil sources are certified by the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil. This protects primary and high conservation value rainforest. The palm oil that is in the products with the RSPO label is not linked to this kind of destruction. Seeing the RSPO label doesn't mean that the palm oil in the product is completely destruction free. However, it is a definite step in the right direction. It means that a company wants to improve their palm oil policy. It means that a company wants to help save the rainforest. So if you see an RSPO label, that means essentially the product is sustainable. A different approach to this is POFCAP. So POFCAP stands for Palm Oil Free Certification Accreditation Program. Instead of going about it the RSPO way, which is tracing companies to the the source of the palm oil and trying to figure out whether that's sustainable, POFCAP just makes sure that the companies it certifies doesn't use any palm oil at all so as to avoid destruction. It's a different approach, but the result is basically the same. If you see the POFCAP label, it means that this product is free from destruction. I also thought I should mention contacting companies. So the story that I usually use to start this out is of an orangutan supporter who is in a Whole Foods market and who found a Whole Foods brand product that had palm oil in it. So she contacted Whole Foods and the response that she received explained that Whole Foods uses an RSPO certification commitment for all of its own brand policy products. You can contact companies yourself so that you can make an impact on their policies. Lots of companies have cracked under consumer pressure. Girl Scouts and Kellogg's were convinced by the hard work of one motivated consumer, and that's Maddie Vorba. PepsiCo, a much larger company, took years of effort from Rainforest Action Network and finally changed their palm oil policy earlier this year. Another important example is Iceland Foods. They are a grocery store that they changed their palm oil policy dramatically to ban palm oil from their own brand products. You might know of Iceland Foods' commitment from a TV commercial that actually never got aired because it was supposedly political. It denounced palm oil through the story of a homeless baby orangutan. It is a heartbreaking commercial and it is beautiful to watch. If you're trying to avoid palm oil or figure out what products contain palm oil while you're shopping, one important thing that you need to know is that palm oil has a lot of aliases. These are different names for common palm oil derivatives or related products. For example, palm kernel oil is harvested from a different part of the palm fruit, but it is linked to the same kind of destruction. In order to find these kinds of aliases, you just need to remember a couple of short words that will show up in almost all of them. So palm is one. Lore, which you might see in sodium lorith sulfate or lorith 20. Steer, which you might see in stearic acid or sterile alcohol or products like that, or ingredients like that. Olay, which refers to the, the oil part of it and the source of the oil. Oleic acid, linoleic acid. Glyc, glycerin or propylene glycol. Or other, um, other things that you might see are acetyl in a product or olay in an ingredient or Elias guineensis, which is the scientific name for palm oil. This ingredients list contains a couple of examples. So this ingredients list, as soon as you see palm oil, you're like, oh, that has palm oil in it. But if it didn't have palm oil in it, then these are a bunch of other things that you might see on the ingredients list that would be a giveaway. 
So first it has glycerin, which has glyc in it, obviously. Then distilled monoglycerides, also glyc. Hydrogenated palm kernel oil, that has palm in it, even though it's kind of halfway hidden in there. And sodium stear oil lactylate, and that has stear in it, also very buried and hidden in there. And then lastly, there's a vitamin A palmitate ingredient on this. Some aliases are more common than others in certain products. For example, if palm oil is in milk, it will nearly always be listed as vitamin A palmitate. If you're looking at a bottle of shampoo, though, you're more likely to see sodium lauryl sulfate. In a packaged product, like the one in the picture, you'll probably see just flat out palm oil, as well as mono and diglycerides or palm kernel oil. There are also a number of apps that you can use that will help you determine whether a product contains palm oil or sustainable palm oil. So one example of this is the app Palm Smart. This lets you scan the barcode of a product to figure out whether it has unsustainable palm oil in it. And it tells you how certified the palm oil is. It tells you a kind of a grade for the brand and it tells you whether or not this product is going to cause rainforest destruction. One unfortunate issue with trying to help save the rainforest is that there are a lot of people out there who just don't know about palm oil. But now you know. So you can go out and you can use your voice to spread the word. Raising awareness can be big. It can include info booths or speeches or live lessons or webinars like the one I'm doing right now. But you can also just do small things like make posts on social media or text a couple of friends. Remember that each per new person you tell can then make their own impact. It's a ripple effect. We need to get this out to as many people as possible so that we can start making change and help save orangutans. And one last thing that I wanted to talk about was couch conservation. This is my and the orangutan gang's name for simple little things that don't seem like they have a big impact, but they can have bigger consequences and influences. Here are some examples. You can include, you can make decisions about your shopping list using a scanner app or reading ingredients of products. You can then implement those changes into your shopping list to figure out how can I be more sustainable. You can raise awareness to your friends. You can make a post on social media. You can text a friend. You can also contact companies. There are pre-written letters out there that will allow you to just put the letter into an email and email the company or whatever contact form they have on their website. And there is one of those on the orangutan gang website that can be found on our resources page that you can use to contact any company you'd like. These are all things that you can do without having to sit up. They don't take very long. They have an actual impact especially spreading the word and contacting companies. And because of that, I'm going to challenge you to do one of those things this week. Remember, it's Orangutan Caring Week. This is the time to step up and take actions to help save orangutans. So it's Orangutan Caring Week. Please take one of these actions and contribute to helping save the rainforest. Here are the credits for some of the images that were on my presentation. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.